Hello you guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about The Lean Startup by Eric Ries. In this series, my MBA journal, I'm taking a year out to where I'm reading lots of books that are commonly recommended to MBA students. So if you have a book that you think would be really useful for me to read, please do comment below. I read all my comments and reply to everything. From everything I'm learning from this book, The Lean Startup, I'm putting it straight into a platform I'm building. My business is gonna be totally free for the first couple of months because I just really need your feedback, guys which is going to be really useful if you're building your own store or you're a solopreneur or when you have an online store and you need user-generated content, testimonials, before and after pictures, they can actually be quite irritating to come by and that was the experience I had in my own style. So I'm building this where you can collaborate with influencers completely for free, purely just by giving them some inventory and so they can try out your product, do before and after images, have testimonials after they've experienced using your product. It's gonna be really, really handy and the services that are already out there for businesses look actually quite expensive. My business is gonna be totally free for the first couple of months because I just really need your feedback, guys. I have never developed a platform myself and it'll be great to get real life startup customer feedback so we're going to be launching soon feel free to check out the link is in the description it's influencersampleclub.com and yeah just check us out let me know what you think when it launches and can't wait to hear from you guys so let's dive into the book the lean startup by eric Rees. let's get into it <laughs> Startups need to be managed completely differently from established companies. Established companies are businesses that have been around long enough to know what has worked well for them and what could work in the future. Startups don't have that data and they don't know what their customers want. They don't know what approaches are best for finding customers or creating a sustainable business. Startups need to go on a fact-finding mission and they need to stay flexible. So the author asks us to have a strategy but really be willing to be flexible when the data comes in and shows that your strategy might not be the most useful. A startup's management team should also try to maintain an overview of their situation and keep the company steered towards its overall goal. The main goal of any startup is to find a business model that's profitable and sustainable, and you'll do this through validated learning. So you come up with a hypothesis, for example, people like to pay a monthly subscription to watch ad-free movies and TV programs. Then you'll build a prototype. Zappos started with the hypothesis that people just wouldn't mind buying shoes online. So to test their idea, the founder took pictures of shoes in a shoe shop, posted it on a fake website and run ads to the website and people actually tried to buy the product and then he knew that he had an idea that would work really really well. Part of developing a product is having a leap of faith. If you believe that your product will be successful but you have no proof, to get the proof every founder needs to formulate and test two fundamental assumptions. assumptions, the value hypothesis and the growth hypothesis. The value hypothesis assumes that the product will be useful to its customers and the growth hypothesis suggests that the product will not be just only useful to early adopters but will grow to a much wider audience. Both assumptions need to be tested out. Both assumptions need to be tested out as soon as possible. Only if they can be validated is it worth investing the time and effort into developing the product. Develop Develop a minimal viable product to test your idea in the market. The most effective way to get real world customer data is to develop a minimum, minimal viable product. The MVP can be a simple bare bones prototype of your product or it could even be a smoke test. So for example, you pretend to sell a fake product or share a video, which is what the founders of Dropbox did. And they shared how their backups cloud software would work. So this is the first step in finding out if there's going to be any actual demand for your product. Build measure, learn as fast as possible and as often as possible. So right now you'll have a simple prototype or a video that you've presented to and you've gathered their feedback. And now you're going to need to measure their interest in the product. How many people clicked the purchase button and tried to buy shoes from your fake web shop? So when measuring, make sure you're not only measuring numbers, but ensure that you keep speaking to customers for their feedback. What you learn in one cycle could then be used to conceptualize and build a new optimized product, which brings you into the next build, measure, learn cycle. This process is then repeated and you also need to make sure that you're going through every build, measure, learn cycle relatively quickly in order to improve as fast as possible and to get to that sustainable model. 
When developing and improving a product, startups have to distinguish between value and waste. Even if the founders and engineers think that a feature is really valuable and it's the bee's knees, the only opinion that really matters are the customers and the people that are trying it out. Valuable features are those that help to attract more customers and generate more revenue. Rees shows that any startup can test every possible change before actually implementing it. So for example, your website colors, your click-through rates on landing pages, have two versions of everything, and track customer behavior. Any change you wish to make to your product should be tested with this semi-scientific approach before you actually implement. And don't be afraid to pivot. So what is pivoting? Pivoting means that the core assumptions behind the startup have changed, and so a new hypothesis needs to be tested out. So customer feedback may show that you need to change your actual core purpose of the startup. Or it could mean that you need to change your product or pursue a different customer segment or change your main sales channel. Pivoting really can be a huge upheaval, so Rees said that we should have a pivot meeting once a month take an honest look at the data, focus on one engine of growth. There are three different kinds of growth engines. The sticky engine, the sticky engine works by retaining existing customers. The viral engine works by getting existing customers to share your product and promote it via word of mouth. And finally, the paid engine is paid advertising. And it's sustainable if existing customers are bringing in enough revenue to sustain investing into acquiring more customers. There's a problem with vanity metrics, say for example, you have a hundred thousand Facebook fans or you as a founder are putting in a hundred hours a week is any of this actually valuable to the business does it increase revenues does it increase the customer lifetime value does it and so you really have to take an honest hard look at the vanity metrics are they just metrics that you kind of think are cool to show off define your core metrics and analyze them properly the right core metrics differ from startup to startup, but often they're things like increases in number of paying customers, average session length per customer, number of recommendations generated, say per 1000 customer. So when analyzing data, it can be really helpful to use the so-called cohort analysis. Don't just look at how the revenues or user base have grown. Consider how new customers behave compared to old ones. So let's say, for example, one of your core metrics is your recommendation rate. To understand how it advances, you should examine the following. On average, how often did customers who signed up six months ago recommend your product to their friends? And what about customers who signed up four months ago, two months ago? So by comparing cohorts, you can see whether you're moving towards your goal. So guys, I would definitely recommend this book. It's really inspired me in how I approach my own startup. I, I really recommend it. It just, it clarifies a lot of things and it simplifies a lot of things. So yes, I definitely recommend it if you're on your own journey to building a startup or you've launched one, but you just want a reference book to keep reminding yourself of valuable things. And yeah, I recommend it. And feel free, if you would like to, to check out influencersampleclub.com. We're gonna be launching very soon and I'm very excited about it. I've, with all of the stuff that I've learned from the Lean Startup, I'm pouring it straight into the Influencer, influ I keep calling it the Influencer Sample Club. It's just influencersampleclub.com. Also feel free to like and subscribe if you like this new type of content. I'm gonna be here five times a week. It's very ambitious, but I've been doing really, really well I've scheduled a lot of videos in advance so you're gonna be seeing a lot of me on here now and I look forward to seeing you very soon I'm gonna love you and leave you guys and bye for now